Mike with TechPB. And um, as you know, uh, when TechPB launches, we are going to have a portion of the website donated to what I like to call paintball science. It's going to be called Punk Works. And um, Cocker Punk and Bryce are going to be some of the authorities in that in that area. Um, but I get you know I get emails all the time. People like when I kind of go off on these little rants. I'm going to do one here. And what we're going to talk about is you know I get people you know asking is it the gun or is it the player is it which is more important and I'm going to try to answer that question right now. And I'm going to just give you in my you know 18 getting close to 19 years of experience right now what I think encompasses a, a, a good paintball player. How much is you know what what percentage of it is gear? What percentage is whatever? But I'm going to say that a lot of paintball players have a tendency to over, you know, they have a tendency to make the gear more important than it actually is, okay? Now, if we can picture that a paintball player is 100%, okay? I'll say that the the gun that you use is actually only about 20%, and, you know, the gun that you use in your gear is only about 20% of, of you as a, as a complete paintball player, okay? 20% tops, okay? 5% of that is accuracy and efficiency. I'm sorry, accuracy and consistency. 5% is efficiency. 5% is the rate of fire. And 5% is the reliability, okay? So when you're beating yourself up over the internet about what board should I get and this, that, and the other, keep in mind that that is a very small percentage of you as a complete paintball player, okay? Um, you know, the first 5%, is it accurate and is it consistent, okay? Most of the guns that are made nowadays, most of the guns that are made nowadays, fit that bill just fine. They're accurate, they're consistent. If you can hit a spot this big from maybe 50 feet away, which most guns have because I own them all and I test them all, um, your gun, you know, you that, that part is handled, okay? So let's say, for instance, by upgrading your regulator or upgrading your barrel, okay, you're only looking at about a 1% increase in you as a total paintball player. 5% is efficiency, okay? Most guns nowadays, you can play a game without running out of air, and that is including the little 47, 3,000 steely tanks, okay? I can take a steely tank and play a game of X-Ball with it and shoot four to 500 rounds. I can go and play Woods Ball and, and shoot four to 500 rounds and be competitive with a little tank. So most of the guns today, even though with the Super Gun Show we've wasted hundreds of dollars in paint, most of the guns today, you can play at least a game without having to worry about your air. Um, Rate of fire. If your gun keeps up with all the other guns that are out there, now most of the loaders that are out there right now starting at $30 and going above. This includes the Spider Fasta, this includes the Tipman SSL 200, okay, the Torque Loader, the View Loader I Force. Um, all of these loaders nowadays can feed 13 balls per second or faster. The Eggy 3 and the Eggy 2, those feed 13 balls per second or faster. Excessive was using those playing X Ball a few years ago. Um, so most of the loaders nowadays can keep up with the rate of fire for you to be competitive at all levels. Woods ball, turn, you know, X ball, PSP, I mean, all that stuff, okay? And the last thing is reliability. Most of the guns that are built nowadays, with the exception of a few, are generally very reliable. They will work at least 85, 90% of the time if you take good care of them. Um, so, so if your gun is only about 20% of your, of your total paintball ability, what makes up the other 80%? My opinion, 40% is mental, okay, which means you're, are you mentally prepared to play paintball, or do you feel like even playing paintball today, have you walked the fields, have you, do you understand the objectives, do you communicate with your team, um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an example really quick about being mentally prepared when you play paintball, okay, and I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put on my damage jersey, oh, this thing fits nice, so here we go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an example of being mentally prepared when I play paintball. Let's say, for instance, I've trained myself that when I my loader goes down on the field, this is my this is my reaction right away. I'm out there and I'm playing, okay, shooting, shooting, whatever. My loader goes down. Usually, the first thing that I do is I empty all the paint out of it. Okay, so I pull it off, see if I can figure out what's going on. If it doesn't work, the next thing I do is I take my loader, I stuff it into my jersey, and I grab the pot out of my pack, and I go like this on my gun. Okay. So while I'm out there playing, I'm holding the pod above my feed neck and, and running around and playing like this, okay? So yeah, paint's dumping out all whatever, but this, that, and the other, but I'm mentally prepared to handle that challenge of my loader breaking when I'm out there on the field. So you'll see me out there playing like this. Every once in a while, I'll even go and do this drill. I do it usually about once a week. And if you were to ever hook up a heart monitor to me, and let's say, for instance, I had my, my you know, I'm, I'm playing as Crystal Sawyer, or I'm playing against, you know, like Glenn Takamoto or something like that, or 
or some of the guys from Damage or something like that. And while I'm out there playing, my loader dies. For me, I am mentally prepared to accept that challenge of my loader dying on the field. I try to fix my loader, loader doesn't work. Stuff down my jersey, take the pot, put it over the top of it, and I continue the game. I've won games like this before. I've slid into the snake, broken my loader, the loader went flying, took the pot out and went. That's being mentally prepared to play paintball. And probably uh, the last thing, which is I would almost say is almost even more important than mentally, mentally prepared, but it is very important, it's physically prepared. Okay, are you uh, getting into shape? Are you doing conditioning? Are you jogging? Are you working out? Um, you know, when you go to the paintball field, do you have the ability to play nonstop all day long? You know, do you get winded? Are you overweight? How are you eating? Are you drinking? You know, um, you know, how's your speed? Do you go out and do wind sprints and run around and stuff like that? You know, can you concentrate and, and maintain a, a, a critical position? Like, say, for instance, being in the snow, you know, being in the snake and, and shooting down the snake, or, or if you're in the woods and you're holding a really tight prone position or something like that. Physical, being physically able to play paintball is more important than any of this other stuff because being physically and mentally prepared will overcome anything that your paintball gun will throw at you, okay? If your gun's not being accurate, you know, if you broke a ball on your barrel, if you are physically and mentally prepared, you will be do better than that. If your gun's not shooting very consistent, it's plus or minus 20, being physically and mentally prepared will help you overcome that. So I used to tell my rendition players all the time, your regulator is not the reason why you suck. Okay, your regulator is not the reason why I said stop blaming your equipment. Once your gun is shooting 13 balls per second at 300 feet per second, you're done. That's it. You're done. All of the money you're going to spend into it, is, it you're, the, you're just going to get marginal increases in performance. If you're not mentally prepared and physically prepared to play paintball, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It, you're, you're lost. So stop focusing so much on equipment, okay? Your equipment is only going to get you to 20%. Get mentally prepared, get physically prepared, go out there and play paintball, and I think you'll see you'll do a lot better than sitting around browsing around figuring out what should I buy, what should I get, should, do I need an upgrade board, do I need a new trigger, do I need a new ASA, you don't need any of that shit. Get mentally prepared, get physically prepared, you'll be a monster on the field. Thanks for tuning in. I've been to Frighton, I've been to East Point.